Perry and don't stop the music here right here at Galaxy 107 FM, 17 after 11 o'clock. I know we're running behind. My fault. It is totally my fault. I'll take the blame for it. 16 degrees downtown, heading for a high of 17 today. I know we're going to get there too. Even though it is miserable and rainy outside, I have a vision of loveliness right in front of me. Sierra Garrett, good morning or good evening over there in LA. How are you? How are you, my dear? I'm so glad to talk to you and Barbara. It's going to be a great interview. It really is. Believe me, I am on the edge of my seat because I have had always a big fascination with you and your music. And, uh, well, you know, it, it is one of these things that uh, has finally come around that I've actually got to meet you. Way back in the day, i got to admit, you used to pack the dance floors in a lot of the... Uh, nightclubs that I used to work with, oh, let's say in mid-80s with K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Now, please, please tell me, when did you write that? How did you come to the lyrics? And how did you get so many popular people dancing to your music? And it is absolutely good music. How did you hit that mix? Well, I didn't write it. That song was uh, given to me and found uh, for me by my then producer, the late Rod Temperton. Um, it was a song that I really liked because it was so cute and like a nursery rhyme and um, uh, it begins with an L, O and a V, the last letter is ooh, E, <laughs> I love you, you love me, this kind of thing could be, uh, anyway, it was, it was very sing-songy and very like a nursery rhyme and I thought it was really cute and clever yeah. and we did a pretty interesting video to it, I had a lot of fun, it's like my one of my first uh, videos now, for, me, any, for me, any single that I've released. Now, let me get, get this right. Uh, if my memory serves right, you were wearing a red dress on the cover. Your memory is going to have to serve for us all, because yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> believe me, I, I believe I'm right there. Uh, just no, before we... Take your word for it. Just before we get into this, I really want to thank Eric, your manager, and uh, also in the Mirror Management LLC. i got to thank them for uh, setting this up with you, and also uh, Thornell Jones Jr. You know, I'm going to have to buy that man an ice cream, and I will keep up with that, I really will. Uh, because I am so humbled to have somebody like yourself in front of me today. And uh, you and your credentials are impeccable. And I'm going to go down through them very, very shortly. But first of all, let's play K-I-S-S-I-N-G -I from way back in 1988. There you go. <laughs> here we go. You're right here at Galaxy 107 FM with Seattle Garrett. I love that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just missed that. You have to say Saida Garrett, even Saida. with your accent. Saida. 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 Thank you for correcting me. I'm, I'm, you, you know, the other day I did an interview with a, a person who came from, we call it Regina here in New Zealand, but they come out of Canada and they call it Regina. Over, yes. uh, we, we're, sorry, I got it wrong. Uh, we call it Regina here. They call it Regina over there. And okay, he, that's too close to vagina that, for me. That's how they got me to say it. Please <laughs> say that word. And I'm going, no, there's no way that I would ever, especially to a lady. I can't do that to a lady. Come on. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you know, so, but that's how I got the assimilation of the name and the pronunciation of it. Was they had to revert to that lady part. So, uh, Saida, you I've got it right. <laughs> it's a medical term. It really, well, you know, it, it was a nurse as well, and it, it, that's her day job. <laughs> so, I could get away with it. But I'm too much of a gentleman, I really am. There you go. You can't be our president then, dear. Well, I, I, no. <laughs> no. no. I, I would just rather be a very humble fan, I really would. There you go. You know? There you go. <laughs> But I tell you what, if when you get your Grammy, please remember a very ugly old DJ from down under the world said you were going to get one. I'll remember that and I'll remember you too, Brad. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, just, just don't get a tattoo. 
<laughs> don't, don't do that. I had one person that said to me, I'm going to get a tattoo of your face. I went, oh my God. <laughs> oh no, that's horrible. Did they do it? Uh, still to find out actually. <laughs> I'm still yet to find out. But lovely lady, very lovely lady. I just don't see my face being appropriate on any part of her body unless it was for real. Um, you might disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I, I oh, want, so funny. <laughs> I want to talk to you about people who have um, worked with you and, and recorded your music. People like Quincy Jones, for instance, um, Earth, Wind and Fire, uh, Miles Davis. These are iconic people. And, you know, I, I get it. You're an, an icon yourself. You, you guys work together so close. But I would like to know what it was like working with these people. So I'm going to go down that road with you. At right. the same time, um, before we move into keep, uh, uh, keep On Loving You, I'm also going to go down the road of websites, how people can get hold of you, can we buy your merchandise, how our fans can get in touch. Because believe me, when we first started uh, saying to our fans that we're interviewing you, we got hounded by emails. Oh, wow. Literally Please. hounded. So uh, we're going to go back to the desk and we'll have a chat. Oh. That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM and I'm joined by Saida Garrett and believe me, I think I got it right that time, <laughs> I really do. And it is uh, very humbling for me as somebody like myself to have such a vision of loveliness and an icon in the music industry before us this morning. Now there's been a... Uh, you help me? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> you are at the moment, you really are. And uh, you've worked with such uh, prestigious people over the years, and I'm going to go down the road of Michael Jackson very shortly, uh, but you've worked with people like uh, Quincy Jones. Now, I'm sorry, but Quincy Jones for me is an, a favourite and an icon from back in the day. And uh, you must understand, for a white guy who's been involved in the R&B industry himself so much uh, that it is such a pleasure to be able to uh, mention these names. Names like Miles Davis. Now tell me, what was it like working with Quincy, Miles Davis, and even Earth, Wind and Fire? Well, the Quincy and Miles thing happened when I was recording with Quincy for his Back on the Block album. I wrote uh, several songs on that album, one of which Miles Davis played on, right? And during the recording process for that record, Quincy would uh, call me into the studio or let me know he wanted me to be in the studio the day before, and I would be there the next day. Well, uh, one night I left the studio, and he didn't say, come back tomorrow, so I didn't. So the following day, he called and said, where were you yesterday? Miles was here recording your song. I said, you didn't tell me so. I didn't show up. He said, you should have been here because at one point, Miles was playing his horn and he stopped. And he said, you, who that sing? And Quincy said, man, that's, that's Saida. And Miles said, that's Saida? Damn, I know that beat. But he said the B word. So, when Miles Davis calls you a B, it's okay. So you just, you know. So that was my one of my favorite stories um, of the whole process of uh, working with Quincy on that record because it was Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, um, Sarah Vaughn, Al Jarreau, Ella Fitzgerald, Barry White, all are gone. They are. They, and, they and are. For, for most of them, almost all of them. Quincy Jones's Back on the Block album was their last recording. Right. So right. I feel so honored to have worked with, you know, Ella and Sarah and Dizzy and, you know, who, who does that? Who uh, in my age group does that? I mean, but, I, I was just, it was, it was, 
was so heavy. I felt like I was on air the whole time we were recording because you never knew who was going to show up to record or who was just going to show up to hang out. It was so amazing. It was like one of the best uh, recording periods of my entire career. You know, I I would love to be able to have that in my portfolio and also in my memories. Now, I also want to talk to you about a very special person that I have followed over the years and been a big fan of is Aretha Franklin. Now, what was it like working with Aretha? I wasn't in the studio with her, but she recorded a song that I wrote, and then she called me and left a message. Unfortunately, I wasn't home, but um, I listened to that message over and over and over again with a queen of soul is telling me how she loves my song and thanked me for having written it. And I think she's a fan of mine because Aretha then re-recorded the Baby Boom track I did, uh, Ever Changing Times. So I I love her, and, and, and she is... The undisputed queen of soul. There you go. i got to agree with you. I really do. But uh, let's also uh, skip forward a little bit. You also have worked with people like Madonna, for instance. Yeah. Now. Yeah, I, I was able to tour with Madonna on her reinvention tour. And you know what? There's a lot that's been said about Madonna, but let me just say this. Madonna is the hardest working artist that I've ever had the pleasure of, of hanging out with and touring with. She works so hard um, just to be, uh, to, to give her fans what she knows they want. She is um, an incredible entertainer. She, you know, she does two hours of number one hits like Michael. I don't know very many artists that can perform for two hours only singing their number ones. Okay. Michael was one of them, and I think Madonna is another one. You know, um, quintessential artists. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I'm very envious uh, for you to be able to say that to me because, believe me, I've always wanted to meet Madonna and uh, go on holiday with her, if you want to put it like that. (laughs) Uh, But moreover. Absolutely. So I take a ticket. I'll stand in line, believe me. And the closest I'll ever get will be to one of her concerts. I know that. Uh, But, you know, uh, I would love to be able to talk to her, much like I talk to you as well. And it would be uh, something that we're going to work on one day. I know that. Uh, Make a wish, Grant. Make a wish. uh, Always make a wish. Absolutely. (laughs) You know, I think it would be in vogue, to be quite honest. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let's throw puns everywhere, you know. <laughs> you know for me, I'd be like a virgin, to be quite honest. <laughs> 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 anyway, let's move away from Madonna. I want to talk to you about Aloe Black. You were Aloe Black. Yeah, Aloe Black. Aloe, like the plant. Um, Aloe is the a quintessential recording artist. His songs have meaning and passion, and he's a devout father and husband, and he has, he's one of those artists with a lot of integrity, whom you just respect from their body of work. Um, I really enjoyed performing with him uh, last summer at the Ford Theater in Hollywood. It was just awesome. We, we duetted uh, Man in the Mirror and sang a um, uh, one of his songs on stage, and it was just an awesome experience. Just hanging out with him, hanging out with him, him and his family, and just learning uh, how he came to be the artist that he is. He's awesome, awesome individual. You know, I, I get that in his music, I really do. And, and one that comes to mind is I Need a Dollar. <laughs> That's me too. Eh? He relates to everybody. Don't we all go down. Don't we all go down. And, and that one, uh, that's what makes him so popular, I'm sure, is he can relate. To the everyday, every working class person from uh, from basically childhood all the way up to any career that you choose, we all need a dollar, and that's what it's all about. So uh, I got to congratulate you for uh, associating with uh, uh, Hello Black and uh, yes. a- a- and getting into the music scene there. And now I've also uh, and I want to talk to you about uh, Sergio Mendes. Now uh, he's yes. he's a guy that I followed many 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 years ago in the uh, industry. And I haven't heard a lot of them uh, just lately, over, over the last couple of decades. Uh, do you keep in contact? Do you still uh, uh, do work with them? I met Sergio Mendez on a whim. 
like 35, 38 years ago. Not, like, not going there, not I going there. Just, I was just a child at the time, but anyway. <laughs> um, you still I are. I station where he was, and, and I just, I don't even know where the idea came to me, but I just said, ask to the DJ, ask Sergio if he's looking for any singers. And the DJ said, why don't you ask him? And he put Sergio on the phone, and I was like, <laughs> and he, he asked me, do you have anything you could play me? Do you, I said, yes, I have one record that I made last summer. And it was a, a record that came and went. My only uh, record, I was signed to a group called Deco. And we had this, I mean, a, a group called Plush. And we had this one album out. And so I knew two people that had the record. I knew my mom had it, and I knew my grandmother had it. So I went to my mom's house. I got this album, drove to Encino, where, where Sergio lived, and his wife opened the door, and I introduced myself, and she invited me inside. And Sergio came down this long, gone with the wind, cascading staircase with Bermuda shorts, a Hawaiian t-shirt, a straw hat, and a big, fat stogie, right? <laughs> so, um, he took the record from me, and we went to his dining room where the record player was, and he lifted up the needle, dropped it, picked it up, dropped it, picked it up, dropped it, and he said, mm, pretty good. So he then gave his wife permission to give me a cassette, and on that cassette were three Portuguese songs that I had to learn in five days. Okay. Five days after that, I went to Sergio's house again, where I auditioned for him and his music director, a guy named John Beasley, who I still love and appreciate to this day. And um, from that, I started touring with Sergio Mendes. And Sergio really had me messed up because I thought touring was you get on a plane on Friday and you fly into wherever you're going to do your gig, you do the gig the next day, and then you fly back home. <laughs> no. No. That's not reality. And I, I was in for a rude, rude awakening when I found out what touring really was and uh, how uh, Sergio set it up so he, the way he liked to tour. So I, I was really spoiled early on. So um, when it came time to tour with, with Michael Jackson, I didn't want to be on the bus. Like I did one bus ride for, for 12 and a half, 13 hours, and I was whipped. I couldn't function the next day. So I said, I can't, I have to fly. I, it, it was just, it was just mandatory for me. Mm -hmm. So, um, and Sergio, I ran into him 25 years later or, or been in contact with him, and 25 years later he thought of me when he was working on the movie Rio, and they and they had recorded all the songs in Portuguese, and they needed an English lyric for a few of the songs, right? So my charge was to come up with an English lyric that sounded like the Portuguese that they had already recorded. So it was, it was quite a task for me, but he knew that I could do it. And because he invited me onto that project, that was my invitation to my second Oscar nomination. The first one was uh, Love Do I Do, uh, a song from Dreamgirls for Jennifer Hudson. You know, um, I, I understand uh, about the uh, uh, Oscar nominations, and I am so enamored of somebody who's ever been nominated, especially more than once. And uh, But I, I still say, and I firmly believe, the Grammy you got in your hand is better than two Oscar nominations any day. And i got to congratulate you with that, and I'm going to go down that road with you very, very shortly. But first of all, I want to know about websites. How do uh, our fans get in touch with you? Do you answer uh, your fans where, when they do get in touch with you? Is it like Facebook, Twitter, and places like that? And can Okay. Through my website, Saida.com, uh, Twitter, at Saida Garrett, uh, Instagram, at Saida Garrett, Facebook, at Saida Garrett, you know, whatever um, social media platform you care to use, I can be found on it. So nice. It's not difficult to find me at all. Awesome, but, awesome. And, and do you have a merch store? S-I-E-G-A-H. Yes. S -I -E there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Get on that straight away. Now, do you have a, a merchandise store as well that they can uh, buy products from you? And, uh, and I suggest, folks, don't be cheap. Don't download the music unless you pay for it. Absolutely. I mean, a girl's got to eat, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so what's going to happen is next year will be the 30th anniversary of the release of Man in the Mirror from the Bad Album. And on that note, I will be doing um, like a 
tour. I'll be playing. Uh, we haven't. We're setting it up now. I'll be playing songs um, inspired by Michael, songs written for Michael, and uh, songs that I've recorded with Michael, and songs that we did on on the tour. And from that, I will have um, uh, merchandise that corroborates with with that whole uh, that whole branding tour, the Man in the Mirror tour. So it's going to be a lot. I'm going to do a lot of speaking engagements. I've been to um, many colleges and, and universities to talk about the music business and my um, my time with Michael. It was it was um, a huge learning curve for me. He taught me so much about how to entertain and how to uh, handle an audience. Michael would have the audience 90, 100,000 people, 80,000 people in the palm of his hand. And I would watch him do that every night. But Grant, let me tell you, there were some nights, not that, not that any fan of his would not know the difference, but when you watch him every night, there were some shows where he was so phenomenal that us, background singers and musicians on stage would stand back and go, damn. He was just, some nights he was just so much, he was just so much better than what even we imagined that he could be and we would see him every night. He used to, he used to blow me away with some of the things that he could do. Michael Jackson was the only person that I've ever known, and even to this day, to do, and only dancers will, will really understand the difficulty of what I'm about to say. Michael would do eight revolutions on his heel. When he would do that spin at the yeah. end, of, end of a song and then drop to his knees, eight revolutions. I can't even do that slow. <laughs> he around eight times. It was, he was just such an incredible performer to watch. And I just feel amazingly blessed to have had a year and a half on the road with him. He was awesome. You know, he really was. I miss him every day. So, you know, I got to admit, um, <clears throat> I did a show with Michael Jackson here in New Zealand, in Auckland, New Zealand, uh, at Mount Smart Stadium way back in the 80s uh, when he did the Thriller Tour. Now, I'm just wondering, were you a part of that? No, I was not. Uh, it's a shame. I've never been to New Zealand. I've never been to Auckland. Well, I'm going to go down that road a little later on, too, because we would love to have you I'd love, love here. To go down Oh, I tell you, well, I've got a lot to talk about. Look at the uh, look at the streets and stuff. Believe me, I have a lot to talk to you about. But first of all, I want to talk to you very, very quickly now about Keep On Loving You. Now, please tell me, how did you put the lyrics to this together? How did you uh, produce this and where did you get it recorded? I recorded this song uh, a couple of years after Michael passed. Um, it was contact with the rest of the family, maybe uh, Jermaine or uh, even uh, Janet or any of those? Uh, do you, uh, I do not. You don't? No, I, uh, I don't, that, unfortunately. I might see Jermaine, you know, here and there. I, I might have seen him maybe once or twice, but I don't think he's around Janet and 
uh, Jermaine since uh, Michael passed. You know, it's a shame that you say that because I do believe that you've been so intimate with uh, not only Michael but the whole family that uh, uh, that, that the uh, relationship should uh, not only prosper but continue very, very nicely. Uh, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Keep On Loving You Right Now. You're right here at Galaxy 107 FM. I'm filming um, the playlist with your song on it. Nice. Yeah, there are currently there's 4,232,000 people hooked in and listening to us. What? Yeah, it's a quiet day. There are people in New Zealand, my goodness. Oh, no, this is global. We go around the world, sweetheart. Oh, my goodness, I love that. Yes. Um, Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> We're innovators. We um, literally are being followed in every country in the world just through the internet and the power of the internet. I love that. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Yes. When it is. And we're also going to be putting you into a magazine that we're associated with uh, coming out of Pittsburgh called Crank It Up okay. Magazine. And uh, for love it. we want to uh, add you into this with this uh, interview as well. We also put in your videos, your bios, all the information that we can get together and promote you as a performer, if you know what I mean. Thank you so much, Grant. I appreciate you for that. Apparently last month, just going by the stats from the management over there, there was about 1.5 million hits last month. So uh, if we can get you into next month's uh, magazine, it would be just awesome to be able to have something to do with Theater Garrett. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm... I love it. I love it. And uh, I really am humbled, and I've got to thank you for taking the time out to be able to talk to us, because believe me... Wait, stop it! I'm here! I'm here for you, darling! I'm nervous I'm, as hell! I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm nervous as hell because I am so respectful of you. Barbara, slap Grant for me. Okay. Slap him out of it. There you go. <laughs> 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 now, n next time. Oh, thank you, Barbara. Oh, you're welcome, sweetheart. <laughs> it's the first time she's ever hit me. <laughs> yeah. um, now we're going to come uh, come into carry on, and I want to talk to about uh, talk to you about the MS program that you've uh, done this for, and, and everything that's in, concerned with this, because this is a good thing. It's a great charity to get behind. And, um, we should hook her up with Todd Richard. Well, we, yeah. should, we can talk about that later yeah. at some stage. Um, but we like to get behind people that get behind charities and stuff like that. And this is awesome. Um, yes. So I'll, I'll go straight to the desk and we'll have a chat about that. Yeah. You're right here at Galaxy 107 FM, and I'm joined by Sahira Yarrett, and believe me, I think she's an icon, and she's uh, singing the words, I keep on loving you, to me, and, and believe me, I'm just so flattered, it's not funny, I really, I like, really I am. I like to make white people blush. Ah, you, 
Thanks. You've succeeded all over the place. I'm completely <laughs> peaked now. <laughs> I really am. Uh, in fact, uh, I think I'm very, very close to the colour of your uh, jumper that you got on right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I really am. Yeah, close up. Yeah, that's the way. <laughs> Barbara's putting the camera in my face again. Uh, now, Saida, uh, I want to talk, uh, Saida, sorry, I want to talk to you about multiple sclerosis. Now, uh, there's a big, big deal here, and I want you to be able to fill me in across the board. Oh, excuse me, and tell me about Carry On, because believe me, uh, I believe that you have a big reason to be able to uh, bring out the song, and uh, uh, tell me what the charity was, uh, behind uh, Multiple Sclerosis and why you got involved in it. Um, I was at a dinner party around the holidays last year, and this very interesting woman was at a table next to mine, and I just heard her speaking, and I went over to chat with her about what she was so passionate about, passionate about, and she was um, heading this um, this thing called the Race to Erase MS, and she is trying to raise money to um, find a cure for MS because right now there is no cure, and she has been suffering with this disease, or should I say living with this disease for like 25 or 30 years. And she's very important in, in the MS world because she funds research for MS. She's really, a, she's like a rock star in this industry. So I asked her, well, like, what could I do to help your cause? And she said, well, I don't know. I said, well, do you guys need a song? Like, would you like a song to promote, you know, your your uh, your cause? And she's like, that would be great. So like a week later, I called her and I uh, sent her this song. Um, I called to get her email and her so I could send the song. And she called me back in tears. She said, oh, my God, Saeed, I love this song. It's a song called Carry On. And I wrote it because sometimes when you have a debilitating disease that sort of stops you in your tracks or hinders your progress or or alters your life and your universe in, in, in some way, you kind of need to know that you're not the only one suffering, you're not the only one uh, dealing with whatever your issue is, be it depression or loss of a job or having been in jail or, or not having, uh, uh, coming from a broken family, or any number of ailments or, or issues, any kind of issue that, that weighs on the mind and stifles your independence and, and, and to, tries to block your progress. I felt that I, you, we needed a, a song to, to unify people and, and to help bring them together and help them understand that they're not the only ones dealing with whatever it is that they're dealing with. And the song, Carry On, speaks to that. And and I, I just think it, it is a song that says what a lot of people have no voice to say or don't know how to say. or or it, 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 It's like an answer to many, many questions that MS sufferers and people that suffer with debilitating diseases have about their life and how, how uh, that disease or that ailment has severely hindered their lives. And, and I, just, well, I just wanted a song to empower people, to let them know that they were not alone and that they were not the only ones dealing with whatever issue they were dealing with. And this is like a, something, like a rally song, like a pep song, you know? I just wanted to uplift people that were feeling down. That was basically my purpose. You know, Saida, uh, I absolutely get every word of that in your passion, the way you describe that. Uh, and believe me, it does show in this particular song. Now, if you allow me, I'd like to be able to play that right now. Here's Saida before Garrett. You that, before you do that, you should know, Grant, that 100% of the proceeds of the sale of the song carry on. Go to support the Race to Erase MS research. There you go. You know, I couldn't say better myself. Thank you, Saida. Let's play it. Here's Carry On right here at Galaxy 107 FM. It's a lovely song, isn't it? 
It's a nice song, Graham. Oh, this is a huge song. I love this song. Me too. It's beautiful. Um, so, you know, we have a guy in Canada at the moment. His name is Todd Richard. He does a song for... Todd Richard? Todd Richard. He does a song for the uh, Children's Variety Challenge in Canada. And he's going to be appearing very shortly in the magazine that we're going to be talking about, Crank It Up magazine. Um, we're also going to be tying in a competition with him so that we can tie in the Children's uh, Variety Challenge here in New Zealand and get it to work together. Mm. So that uh, if you download his song, it, it goes 100% to, uh, to the charities. But at the same time, we're also going to be giving away a Rolling Stones guitar, where in fact we have two. Commissioned for Rolling Stones magazine, by the way, that was supposed wow. to go, these were supposed to go to Keith Richards. The real Rolling Stones, right? <clears throat> Somewhere there was a communication breakdown. The guitars were paid for, but never ever picked up. And they've been donated to us to be able to put towards a charity. Aww. I would like to be able to split this up now and possibly put one for the Children's Variety Challenge and maybe if we could work together with your management, maybe we could put one in the magazine with you and this for MS. Well, that would be, that would be wonderful, Grant. Thank you so much. Well, let me put something in place. Uh, let me put a proposal together for not only your management and uh, your team, but for the magazine team. Uh, and see okay. if we can work something together where uh, they can download your song for a dollar, 100% goes to your charity, and the more times that they hit on that, they have more of a chance of winning a guitar. How's that feel? I love that! you got a deal can with Can I friends? participate? No, I probably can't participate. No, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can put <laughs> every show, <laughs> mention it. Then that, that's going to look fishy, so I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> Okay, let's go back to the desk. Are you thinking the way I'm thinking? Yeah. You're right here at Galaxy at 107 FM and I'm joined by icon of music industry, R&B queen herself. And believe me, uh, I think she's the modern day queen of R&B today, Saida Garrett. Now, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, talking about carrying on, we were just talking in that little bit of a break there about possibly putting something together for a competition uh, to be able to help support your cause of multiple sclerosis and believe me we would love to be a part of that so uh, please keep us uh, in touch with each other especially with barbara and we'll certainly put something together there and maybe we'll do. Definitely. maybe one day you'll even give us a mention on one of your shows that you do how's that i love that <laughs> i would do that i would definitely do that very very cool you know i would love to be able to come and see you personally in life and uh uh, well, see, I'm not going to be able to, in the near future, get over to the, uh, to America. Maybe we could get you to tour here in the Australasian area, you know, New Zealand. Uh, and if you're very, very lucky, uh, uh, we might even share you with those people called Australians. <laughs> Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Baby milk chocolate with lemon and chili. Oh, oh <laughs> love it. <laughs> You're a girl after my own heart. That's so true. <laughs> I, I get so many ladies in my life say to me, I can't do chocolate, it just puts the pounds on. And I keep saying, you know, you can't fatten a thoroughbred. <laughs> <laughs> I love you must it. Be married. Are you married? 
Am I married? Yeah. Uh, once or twice now. Oh, okay. Yeah, be, be, been down there. <laughs> I've done that. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in fact, my wife calls me her worst nightmare, so believe me. <laughs> no, no. No. If that were true, she would never have married me. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> let me tell you something later. <laughs> but in the meantime, you know, my life wouldn't be the same without my wife in it. Or my trusty PA, Barbara, believe me, Barbara She's knows me. You, you know, Barbara knows me better than my wife does. I'm damn sure of that. i got to be honest uh, with you. Uh, uh, her and I are so close. That's why Barbara didn't marry you. That's right. That's <laughs> right. But she was a bridesmaid. Oh, okay. We're that close. We're that close. We really are. You know, no, my life could, my life wouldn't work without Barbara or my wife in it. So I, I got to be honest with that. You know, um, uh, but but if you're offering a chance of marrying me, if you're offering a chance to marry me, I would be more than happy to fly over there and talk to you about it. <laughs> oh. You know something? I thought all oh, my Christmas was come at once then. <laughs> I really did. Uh, now, I, I want to talk to you very much about uh, the magazine. Now, we want to get you into Crank It Up magazine. Now, if you go to www.crankitupmagazine, one word, dot com, uh, and just enjoy in there, folks. Believe me, if you haven't been there, you're missing out. You must go and have a look. Uh, and we want to get uh, Saida in there. For the next uh, issue of this, and, and believe me, I, I think so, Ida, yeah, you absolutely are the number one choice for us to be able to put into this magazine. See, not every band that we interview actually gets there, uh, but we oh. think, uh, uh, and believe me, it, it is a very prestigious magazine, uh, and even Polestar give an award for the best of the best for every month, and believe me, you never know, you might be in, uh, in the running to get yourself uh, an award. Uh, even myself have received one, and uh, quite a prestigious thing, it really is. Uh, so uh, the owner of Crank It Up magazine, his name is John Rain. Now, he makes movies. Um, scary movies actually he just completed one not so long ago uh, called The Exorcism of the Seventh Demon uh, he's, uh, and as you know the, uh, the original writer of The Exorcist passed away not so many months ago so uh, he's carrying on that trilogy he was saying to me here's one for you so you might be uh, really in, uh, enthused about this uh, do you remember Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre yeah. Yeah. Or, or how about Jason from uh, Friday the 13th? Yeah. This man, John's having dinner with these guys regularly. Oh, nice. You know, <laughs> the, the, only, the only thing I can ask him is, have you got your chainsaws and your machetes put away? Yeah. <laughs> you know. the metal detector. Yeah, exactly. No temptation at the dinner, dinner table, please. <laughs> but... Uh, right. He's very, very uh, caught up in the movies, and in fact, he's completing a movie as we speak right now. But why I've brought this up is that he himself wants to do tours of people who are in his magazine here in New Zealand, down under. Okay. Wonderful. That would be great. And we want to see Make you. It happen, Make it happen, Make it happen. We want to see you in front of New Zealand audience, uh, audiences here in New Zealand because, believe me, we know they're just going to eat you up. Believe me, they oh, really will. They really the good lit, right? Oh, absolutely. And we're talking about machetes and, and yeah. Friday the 13th and, and Jason yeah. and... No, okay. no, none of that without Eric being around. I like it. There you go. You're safe. <laughs> You're very safe. Uh, but we do want to be able to show you a little bit of our humble country here in New Zealand, show you around. Uh, I think you would absolutely love it. In fact, we'd like to try... It's absolutely stunning. It's we're... beautiful. We'd love to be able to try you on things like some, maybe some wild foods where, have you ever heard of a hoo-hoo grub? A what? A hoo-hoo grub. Okay, no. let me tell you about this. You're going to love this. This is like a caterpillar, a giant caterpillar. It really is. And you put the body, not the head, you bite the head off and you bite down on the body. And it's like a, a creamy white peanut butter. <laughs> There, there's the look, believe me, we're going to put that look on Facebook. Stick with the peanut, real peanut butter. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and, then, uh, and then we may take you down to, uh, oh, I don't know, down the bottom of the South Island and throw you off a bridge. What do you reckon? That might be better, actually. 
Yep. Better than the grub, even. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do well with grubs. Okay, all right. Well, I get that. I'll uh, skip on the grubs. Uh, but we have a thing here called bungee jumping in New Zealand, and we like to uh, participate as much as possible in uh, uh, bringing all of our tourists and all of our famed people down to uh, the South Island and, and literally throw them off AJ's Bridge. <laughs> that's on my bucket list, my dear. Right. Well, that's one thing we're going to have to do together. How's that? Yeah. You got it. You got it. We'll, we'll go together on that one. Uh, and uh, also uh, show you around some of the scenic parts of New Zealand, especially places that uh, time forgot, literally, like the Milford Sound. The only thing that's brand new in the Milford Sound would be probably a P&O cruise going through there. But believe me, uh, you could almost see the dinosaurs walking around through there. And it's so picturesque. Wow. It is absolutely lovely. So uh, not only are we going to get you working here in New Zealand, we're going to show you a little bit about our cultures and get you to meet the indigenous people of New Zealand and uh, be formally welcomed and all of that because we absolutely love you here in New Zealand. We really do. Now, let's go to uh, something that is a little left field, but something uh, uh, so brilliant I just can't get past. I really need to bring this up. We've spoken a bit about Michael Jackson and your collaboration with Michael Jackson. I want you to tell me, please, about I Just Can't Stop Loving You. Uh, it's a song I wrote um, to Michael as, a, as my answer to our duet. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I Just Can't Stop Loving You was the duet that I did with Michael. I, I got confused with Keep On Loving You. I Just Can't Stop Loving You was the first single from 